Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Campbell and welcome to the podcast for topic four, a summary podcast. So we're going to be looking at kind of all of the different things that we've done in this particular unit in particular, um, simplifying and solving. So what's the difference? That's probably our first question. The first difference to simplify means to rewrite in an equivalent form. I often say along with that using some agreed upon rules and the agreed upon rules that we use when we're simplifying rational expressions is to cancel common factors to add the fractions together write it as a single fraction instead of two fractions um, and so on to solve means to find the value or values that work in an equation. So let's take a look at some problems. These first ones say simplify. So in the end, I want an answer that is in simplest form, which means for a multiplication problem, there would be no common factors in the numerator and denominator. So when I look at this first one, I start looking for things that are the same in the top and in the bottom of either the same fraction or either fraction. So for example, at a glance, and I'm going to make this bigger if I can. First thing I might look at is go, well, I got a 49 and a 14. Those are both divisible by 7. So I think I'll divide this by 7 and this by 7. And then I might look at the 6 and the 9 and think, well, those are both divisible by 3. So I think I'll divide this by 3 and this by 3. And then I see, well, I've got 2 in the top and in the bottom. I'll divide this by 2 and this by 2. So starting just with the numbers, so far what I'm seeing is that I'll have a 7 in the numerator and a 3 in the denominator, and that's it because the other, everything else was a 1. Then I'm going to look at the x's, and when I look at the x's, I see 5x's, 3 more x's, that's a total of 8, but then I have 4 in the bottom, so I'm going to cancel 4 of them out. Now if you want to take that in a couple of steps, you sure can. So I might go x to the 8th. That's what I have in the top, x to the fourth, that's what I have in the bottom. And then when I look at the y's, I might say, well, I got one y in the top and two y's in the bottom. And then when I look at the z's, I guess I just have z to the eighth in the top. Now, I'm not quite done because I didn't do all my canceling. I'm going to do that right now. I still have the 7 and the 3, but I'm going to cancel four of those x's out. I'm going to cancel one of the y's out. The leftovers will be in the bottom on that one. And z to the eighth. All right, problem one and done. Let's go on. In the next problem that we have, so I'm going to have to slide over here. It's a division problem. Um, so I heard from students, they told me this. This is something that they learned probably in middle school. And I think they say K F C. Oh, how did I write that? I'll try that again. K, that's actually a K F C, which is keep, flip, change. All right, so keep the first fraction. So x plus 2 over 25, x minus 4, x minus 1. Second one, flip it. That means 15, x minus 4 squared over 4x, 2 plus x, and change. Change the divided to a times. And now it's really like that other question. Now, sometimes we have to do some factoring, and sometimes the factoring has already been done for us. And this is one of those cases where it's already been done for us. That's super nice. So the first thing I'm going to look at are numbers. First numbers I see, I see a 25 and I see a 15. Those are both divisible by 5. So divide that by 5, divide this by 5. So, so far with just the numbers by themselves, I'm going to have a 3 in the top. And I'm going to have a 5 times 4 in the bottom. That's 20. That was this 5 and this 4. And then I'm going to look at just plain old x's because I do have just a plain old x here. Right um, here, the 4x in the bottom of the second fraction. There's no other x's I can cancel that out with, so I'm still going to get that. I'm going to put that x in the bottom. And then I'm going to start looking at all the other stuff. I have an x plus 2 in the top and a 2 plus x in the bottom. 
they are written in a different direction, but they're being added. And when you add two things together, it doesn't matter what order you do that in. So x plus 2 and 2 plus x are exactly the same. They are going to cancel out entirely. Now, if it were a subtraction and I had x minus 2 and 2 minus x, then I would say they leave behind a negative 1, but not this one. All right, so the x plus 2s are gone. Then I see an x minus 4 squared. That means this is going to be gone and this is going to be gone. I'm still going to have an x minus 4 in the top, so I'm going to write that x minus 4. And it looks like I'm still going to have an x minus 1 in the bottom, so I'm going to write that x minus 1, and I think that'll take care of it. Super fun. All right, let's go on. So we spent a couple of days with um, multiplying and dividing, and when we got to that second day of multiplying and dividing, we got to problems like I have in our third example here where some factoring is going to have to happen. And actually, every single one of these is going to factor. So let's talk about how that happens. So problem number one, 2x minus x squared. There is a GCF here, greatest common factor of x. So I'm going to write x, and then in parentheses, x times what is 2x? Well, that's 2. x times what is negative x squared? That's minus x. In the denominator, I have a quadratic that has all three parts present, which makes me think, I guess I'm going to have to go with the generic rectangle on that one. So x squared, negative 6, that's the first and last term. Multiply those together, that goes to the top. The middle term goes to the bottom. Then I need two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1. Um, I'm thinking negative 3x and positive 2x. Those two multiply to negative 6x squared and I add to negative 1x. Doesn't matter where you put those things. I guess I'm just filling them in. So x and squared to negative 3x, the bottom row, those have a greatest common factor of x. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. x times 2 is 2x and 2 times 3 is negative 6. So that bottom is going to factor into x minus 3 and x plus 2. I'm going to keep going. The numerator of that second fraction, you might look at that and say, well, that doesn't factor. That's just a linear thing. But it does because just like the numerator of the first one, there's a GCF. 4 divides into both of those. And when I do that, I see 4 times what is 4x? That's an x. 4 times what is negative 12? That's a negative 3. And guys, if you didn't factor that, you would miss out on the fact that eventually these x minus 3s are going to cancel. It's important to factor even things that you don't think factor. If they can factor, you do. The bottom is so right in our final pattern. That's a difference of squares. Square to 4 is 2, so this is going to factor into x plus 2, x minus 2. And then comes the fun part. I'm grabbing my red pen for canceling. What can I cancel? Let's see. Well, I do have an x minus 3. Those are gone. I also have an x minus 2 and a 2 minus x. Those are going to be gone, but they are opposites. That's going to leave behind a negative. I also have an x plus 2 here and an x plus 2 in the second one, but they're both in the bottom, so I can't cancel those out. I kind of think that's it. So final answer time. Final answer is going to be a negative. In the top, there's an x and a 4. In the bottom, there's an x plus 2 and another x plus 2. And if you want to write that as x plus 2 quantity squared, you can. Otherwise, that's it. All right, so sometimes you have to do some factoring. Every one of those required factoring. All right, on to our next example. Now, the next example is we got three problems here. They all involve adding or subtracting, but we're still simplifying, no solving. They are different kinds of questions. The first kind that we have here has a denominator that is written in factored form. So I am going to have to think about, this is all multiplication, the common denominators of three parts here, the 9 and the 6. Common denominator of 9 and 6 is 18. x and x cubed, common denominator would be x cubed, always the biggest y squared and then no, no y's, I guess it would be a y squared. So what do you have and what do you need? That's what comes next. So looking at the first fraction, I have a 9, but I need it to be 18, so I'm going to need to multiply by 2. I have an x and I need it to be x cubed, so I'm going to have to multiply by x squared. 
I have a y squared, I need it to be a y squared. Don't need anything else there. So 2x squared times 8, that's 16x squared. Second part. I have a 6, need an 18, I'll need to multiply by 3. Have an x squared, need an x squared, excuse me, have an x cubed, need an x cubed, nothing needed. I have nothing, but I need a y squared, so I'll need a y squared. And that's going to give me 21y squared. All right, now once I have the common denominator, then, um, and I always say, get your yellow pen out, and let's be cautious here, but I don't need as much caution here because there is just one thing coming after the subtraction, so I don't have to distribute it all. That's usually the issue. So I'll just write 16x squared minus 21y squared all over 18x cubed y squared. Now, guys, it's super tempting to cancel out, say, these y squareds, but you can't because that top is not factored. It's super tempting to, to cancel a 2 out of the 16 and the 18, but you can't because it's not factored. This is it. We are done. That's as much as you can do on this one. All right now, in the next one, it's a different kind of denominator. Those denominators are kind of like little chunks. That's a group, and that's a group. So they're not like in the same kind of factored form here. So what I am going to do is I'm going to my, mark the first one x minus four and x plus one. That's gonna be the common denominator. It's everything from the first fraction and anything in the second one that's not already there. The first fraction has the x minus four, but it doesn't have the x plus one. So it's going to need, oh, and I wish I had more room. Let's see if I can move it over a little bit. We can. All right, it's going to need an x plus 1 over an x plus 1. And some of you like to do this, and I don't think I'll do that here. I have to multiply that out, and so it's x plus 1 and x plus 1. That'll give me x squared, 1x, 1x, and 1. So this will become x squared plus 2x plus 1. The second fraction is missing the x minus 4, so I'm going to put that in the top and in the bottom. That's an x minus 4. Um, here I don't need a generic rectangle. I just need to distribute. So this will become x squared minus 4x. Now, do I need my yellow pen? I absolutely do because my yellow caution pen, this thing right here, has to apply to both of these things. When it's a subtraction, we have to be extra, extra careful. And so this will become x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus x squared and then minus negative 4x is positive 4x. That's the extra caution that we need. The denominator, you can multiply it out if you want to, but there's really no reason to. I'm just going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to do some cleanup. So cleanup, what can I do? Well, I think the x squared, I think I'll use my red pen to show this, the x squared, those are going to zero out. What remains then is a 2x and a 4x. That's a 6x and the plus 1 over the x minus 4, x plus 1. And that's my final answer. All right, going on to example 3. In the example three, it's really a similar problem to number two with the exception that the denominators have to be factored. X squared minus 25 factors into that common factor. We've seen that before, and I'm gonna switch color here so I can tell them apart. That is the difference of squares. X plus five, X minus five. The second one has a GCF. Three is common to both of those. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. It's really important that you factor that because what I hope you notice right now is that x minus 5 is present in both of them. When I get my common denominator, I'm not going to need it twice. I'm going to need the x plus 5 and the x minus 5 from the first fraction, and from the second fraction, I need the 3. It looks nicer out front, so I put it out front. All right, first one's missing the three. Three over three, six x. Second one is missing the x plus five.
We're going to have to multiply all of that out. This time I'm going to try it without the generic rectangle. You can always use that if you want, but I'm going to use the distributive property. So I'm going to take x times x, that's x squared. Then I'm going to take x times 5, that's 5x, and 4 times x, that's 4x, that's going to add to 9x. And then I'm going to have 4 times 5, that's 20. I don't have to be as careful this time, guys, because it's not a subtraction question. So I'm going to go right to my final answer right now so that I look at all of the parts. This part and these three all being added together, combining like terms. Final answer time, x squared, 6x and 9x is 15x and 20. And if I'm going too fast, you always have the option of slowing her down, right? Pause, play it again, whatever you need to do. And that is my answer. Notice I didn't make anything go away in terms of the denominator. That has to come along every time. All right, let's finish up now with looking at some equations. So I got a couple of examples of equations. I have three of them, it looks like. The first one has only numbers in it. Those are kind of easier ones, right? So I'm gonna start by getting a common denominator of, in this case, six. First one, to make a three into a six, we'll need to multiply by two over two. Two times two x, that's four x. For the second one, it's a two, I need to multiply it by three over 3 to make that into a 6. 3 times 1, that's 3. The second one already has that common denominator, so I just have to multiply by 1, I guess, and that's 2x plus 5. All right, now, red pen time. Red pen is what I use for canceling. What am I going to cancel? I'm going to cancel out all these 6s. Because I have a left side and a right side, I can do that. I can't do it when I'm simplifying, but I can when I'm solving. And I might even say, well, I'm going to get my yellow pen and be extra careful because it's subtraction. I don't actually have to be too careful because I'm only subtracting one thing, and that's the 3. So now what I have is 4x minus 3 equals 2x plus 5. That's just a linear equation, so let's grab our x's and get them all together on one side. So on the left, I'll have the 2x and the minus 3. On the right, those cancel out, leaving me with just the 5. And then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. That will give me 2x equals 8. So x is 4, and shazam, I'm done. All right, next one. Uh, no factoring to do. That's always nice. When we look at the denominators, there's no factoring to do. So I just have to think about everything I need to get that common denominator. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm getting all set up for it. So what am I thinking? Well, I know I need an x. First fraction has an x. Second fraction has an x minus 1. Remember, that's a group, so that has to be part of it. And the third fraction has a 4, and I'm just going to put that up front because it looks nicer there. And that's my common denominator. So what is the first one missing? Well, it's actually missing two things. It's missing the 4 and the x minus 1. So I'm going to be multiplying this by 4 and x minus 1. Now, this is a little tricky. I want you to think of it like this. The 6 and the 4 are going to get multiplied together, and then I'm going to distribute that through the x minus 1. So 6 times 4, that's 24. So I'll multiply that by x minus 1 and get 24x minus 24. That's a little bit tricky. All right, for the second fraction, it doesn't have either the 4 or the x. So I'll need both of those. 9 times 4x, well, 9 times 4 is 36, so that's 36x. Finally, the last one has the 4, but it doesn't have the x or the x minus 1. So when we multiply that, it's 1 times x, which is x, and then distribute that. That'll be x squared. Um, that was a minus, by the way. And so minus x. All right, red pen time. Red pen, here it goes. What do I do with it? Cancel, 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 because I can. Yellow pen, got a subtraction. Only one thing to subtract, so not super tough. What do I end up with then? I end up with 20. 4x minus 24 
minus 36x equals x squared minus x. Now, I got to tell you right off the bat here, I am not a big fan of this question, mostly because it has an x squared, which means it's going to be a quadratic. I'm going to have to do some factoring. So let's clean up a little bit before we put it all together. I'd like to combine these two just for making the problem easier. So 24x minus 36x, that's negative 12x. And because it's a quadratic, I need everything on the right hand or on one side. I want it on the right hand side because I like my x squared to be positive. So I'm going to be adding 12x's to both sides. I'm going to be adding 24 to both sides so that I now have nothing on the left, which is important. And on the right, x squared plus 11x plus 24. All right, now, because it's quadratic and all three terms are present, I'm going to need a generic rectangle. And I'll put the x squared and the 24. And that means in the diamond, I'm going to have 24x squared. And then I'm going to have the 11x in the bottom. Now, 24x squared is unfortunate because there's a lot of pairs of numbers that multiply to 24, like 1 and 24, like 2 and 12, like 3 and 8 like four and six those are all different pairs so which one do you like which one of those do you think i can get an 11 out of ah you're right three and eight three x and eight x will give me the 11 x like it all right so how does it factor take an x out of the bottom row times x gives you the x squared times eight gives you the eight x x times three gives you the three x and now i have this factored into x plus 8 x plus 3 and so now I'm going to use the zero product property that says either x plus 8 is 0 or x plus 3 is 0 and that means that x is negative 8 when you subtract 8 from both sides and when you subtract 3 from both sides you get x is negative 3 now when you have variables in the bottom you always have to be careful that the answer is actually the answer it doesn't make the bottom 0 the only numbers that are going to make this bottom 0 would be a 0, that would make that 0, or a 1, that would make that 0. I don't have either one of those. These are both answers that work. All right, we got one left, guys. Can you take one more? Let's do it. Let's see. Um, all right, looking at this next one. Oh, man, right away I'm looking at it, and I'm seeing a quadratic in the bottom, and so I know right off the bat i got to do some factoring. x squared, 15. The more often we do this, so the faster we get, right? And then we get better and better at it. 15x, negative 8x. Let's see if we can do it in our head. With a 15x, oh, that was 15x squared, by the way. It's either going to be a 15 and 1 or a 5 and a 3. And if you guessed 5 and 3, you're thinking smart because I have to get an 8. If I make both of these negative, the product will still be positive, but the sum will be negative. That's what it is. Nice. That wasn't so bad. All right. So what's common to the bottom row? An x, an x, a negative 5, a negative 3. So this is going to factor into x minus 5, x minus 3. Common denominator time. Oh, I wish I'd give myself a little more room. I'm going to have to write tiny here. All right, so the common denominator from the first fraction, x minus 5, x minus 3. The second fraction, I have x minus 5 already. I don't need it again. From the right-hand side, I have the x minus 3. I don't need that again. All right, there's a the common denominator. What does the first fraction need? Nothing. Already has it. What does the second fraction need? Well, it doesn't have the x minus 3, so I guess I'm going to need that. Now, remember, that's a group, so these have to get distributed. That's going to give me 3x times x, 3x times negative 3. Last fraction doesn't have, doesn't have the minus 5. That's my phone, guys. I'm going to pause for just a second and answer that. 
All right, now that my phone is not ringing anymore, by the way, that scared the bejeebies out of me. I totally jumped when that happened. Um, so anyway, back to the problem here. Negative 1 times x minus 5, that's a group, so I'm going to have to distribute that. That will give me a negative x and a positive 5. Now, here comes the fun part. Ready? Take out your yellow pen. Nope, not the yellow pen. Take out the red pen and cross off, cross off, cross off. That is the beauty of solving. And what do we get? We get 7x plus 3 plus 3x squared minus 9x equals negative x plus 5. Unfortunately, this looks like a quadratic equation. That is a bummer. Um, I want to keep my x squared on the left because it's positive over there, so I'm going to add x to both sides and subtract 5 from both sides. You see how I'm kind of lining them up with other ones that are like them? just makes it a little easier for my work. So writing them in the right order now, I'll have a 3x squared. I have a 7x and a 1x, that's 8x, but then I also have a negative 9x, so that's going to be a negative 1x. Then I have a 3 and a negative 5, that's a minus 2. And time for the good old generic rectangle. This is a little harder one. Anytime you have a number in front of the x squared, it's a little harder. Um, but we can manage it because we're like smart people, right? So 3 times negative 2, that's where the 6 came from. Oh, this isn't going to be bad. Negative 6x squared, I think a negative 3x and a 2x. That wasn't bad at all. I thought it was going to be so much worse. And so bottom row, what does it have in common? Well, it has both a 3 and an x. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. x times 2 is 2x. I think we got it. So... 3x plus 2x minus 1. And again, zero product property says 3x plus 2 equals 0. x minus 1 equals 0. Subtract 2 from both sides here. Divide out the 3. And on this one, add 1 to both sides. And then we have our two answers. Now, I am going to be really careful. I don't want to circle them just yet because I want to make sure that they're both actually answers. I know if I got 5, it wouldn't work because 5 would make this denominator 0. It would also make this denominator 0. That's a no-no. I know 3 wouldn't work because it would make this fraction 0 in the bottom, and it would make this one 0 in the bottom. That's a no-no. Neither of mine do that, so guess what? Both of them are answers. No reject. All right, that takes us to the end of this. So I'm hoping now that you do really well on your test or on your retake. And we'll talk to you next time.